Hello friends. Today our discussion is on factors affecting compaction of bitmus layers. Compaction is the process of densifying or reducing the volume of a mass of material. For asphalt mixtures, compaction locks the asphalt coated aggregate particles together to achieve stability and provide resistance to deformation that is rutting. It also reduces the permeability of the mixture and improves its durability. The purpose of compaction is to reduce the amount of air wires in the asphalt layer by moving the aggregate that is coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and filler in the layer closer together. In recent years, the non-availability of quality aggregates has resulted in rise in their cost. Similarly, the price of bitumen is also increasing day by day. Therefore, cost relationship between material and compaction process has become more important now than earlier. Compaction actually costs very little per ton of bitmus material and if you compare the cost of three items that is aggregates, asphalt and compaction that is how it looks. The cost of compaction is very little as compared to the cost of aggregate and asphalt in a mixture. Without meeting the specified in-place density, the asphalt mix will not perform for its intended service life and therefore compaction process is equally important as the production and placement of asphalt mixture. So here again you can compare the value of compaction here. It is as good as the value of aggregate and asphalt in a mixture. Several factors can affect the compaction of a bitmus layer and you can summarize them in three groups. The first is temperature, ground temperature, air temperature and wind speed. Properties of the mix like aggregates, nominal maximum size of aggregate, shape, texture, the property of the binder like viscosity and amount of binder in the mixture and third is construction factors. How much is the layer thickness? then type and number of rollers, speed of roller, number of passes and hall distance. We will discuss each of these factors one by one. The first is temperature and temperature is the most important factor that affects the ability of a contractor to achieve the desired level of density in an asphalt mixture. The mix temperature has a direct effect on the viscosity of the binder and that affects the compaction. At high temperature, the bitumen is at its lowest viscosity. The aggregates in the mix move closer together easily when the bitumen is fluid or at its lowest viscosity. As the bitumen in the mix cools, it becomes more viscous or stiffer. The aggregates in the mix lock in position and no more air can be forced out. The upper limit of temperature is generally 160 degrees centigrade, but some mixes may become unstable at this temperature. For tender mixes, stay farther behind the paver to allow the mat to cool enough to permit normal compaction. As the mix cools, the asphalt binder eventually becomes stiff enough to effectively prevent any further reduction in air wires, regardless of the applied compactive effort. The temperature at which this asphalt binder becomes stiff commonly referred to as cessation temperature and this cessation temperature is around 80 degrees centigrade for dense graded mixtures. Below this temperature roller can still be operated on the mat to improve the smoothness and surface texture but further compaction will not occur. The mat temperature therefore is crucial to both the actual amount of air wire reduction for a given compactive effort and the overall time available for compaction. If the initial temperature and cool down rate are known, temperature of the mat can be estimated at any time after laying. The major factors which affect the time available for compaction are initial mat temperature, lift thickness, base temperature, ambient temperature and wind speed. 
Now, higher initial mat temperature requires more time to cool and therefore it will offer longer time window for compaction. But overheating of the mix can damage the bitumen and hence should be avoided. Lift thickness. Thicker layers have a smaller surface to volume ratio and therefore will lose heat slowly giving more time for compaction. Similarly, the base temperature. Base temperature means the temperature of the surface on which the mix is placed. When the base temperature is high, cooling of the mat will be slower and it will also give you a more time window for compaction. Finally, ambient temperature. When the air temperature is high or wind speed is low, you get more time to cool the mat and therefore more time for compaction of the layer. Now, researchers at University of Minnesota, USA have developed a tool that is called multi-cool and it automatically calculates payment cool down rate and time available for compaction. For a mat thickness of 25 mm, for example, if the mix temperature is 150 degree centigrade and the base on which this mix is being laid is 16 degree centigrade, then cooling time to saturation temperature of 80 degree centigrade will be approximately 9 minutes. But if the mat thickness is 50 mm and mix temperature is still 150 degree centigrade and base temperature same 16 degree centigrade, then cooling time to 80 degree centigrade will be 19 minutes. So that is the importance of the layer thickness on the time window which you get for compaction. Thicker is the layer, more time you get for compaction. That means the cooling time of the mat to the cessation temperature is higher. Next is properties of the mix. Wide range of bitmus mixes are used in India. We have dense graded mixes, open graded mixes and stone matrix asphalt mix. We also have gap graded mixes and they are also in use. And similarly, a wide range of aggregates is available in different parts of the country. Aggregate gradation and binder properties can affect the workability. The major part of aggregate gradation is coarse aggregate and the surface texture, particle shape, the number of fractured faces of coarse aggregates can affect the compaction. Mid-size fine aggregate between 0.6 mm and 0.3 mm are also important. High amount of mid-size fine aggregates or rounded aggregates like natural sand can cause a mix to displace laterally. It is because low VMA in such mixes. And similarly, aggregate passing 75 micron is also important. A mix with high fine content will be difficult to compact. Then binder grade. Binder grade can also affect the compaction. A high viscosity grade binder will result in a mix that is more resistant to compaction. Asphalt binder lubricates the aggregate during compaction and therefore the mixes with low asphalt content are generally difficult to compact because of inadequate lubrication. Third parameter is construction factors and compaction equipment. Lift thickness, type and number of rollers, speed of roller, number of passes and hold distance. These are important factors which can affect compaction at site. Thicker lift or thicker layers have a smaller surface to volume ratio and thus lose heat more slowly which increases the time available for compaction. For compaction, four forces of compaction are used to expel air wires. These are static pressure, manipulation, impact and vibration. Static load and manipulation involve lower forces. Static load is created by a steel drum roller, roller operated in the static mode or by a pneumatic roller. The impact and vibrations are dynamic forces and they generate higher compaction force. Vibratory rollers develop these dynamic forces. Compaction equipment 
complex the HMA by two principal means. By applying its weight to the HMA surface and compressing the material underneath the surface contact area. This compression will depend on contact time and hence lower speed will produce more compaction. The second is by creating a shear stress between the compressed material underneath the surface contact area and the adjacent uncompressed material. Higher shear stresses are more capable of rearranging aggregate into more dense configuration. And these two means of densifying HMA are often referred to collectively as compactive effort. Approximately 75 to 85 percent of the theoretical maximum density of the HMA will be obtained when the mix passes out from under the screen. Steel drum rollers or pneumatic wheel roller operated in the non-vibratory mode put static pressure on the asphalt mat and they can have one, two or even three drums. Then manipulation. Manipulation which is also a static force occurs when the forces exerted into the mat are not entirely vertical. Instead, the lines of force are sent in many directions. The benefit of manipulation is that the forces applied in different directions will reorient the aggregate particles and will densify the layer. This is done with pneumatic rollers. The vertical forces push down the large aggregate to increase the density, while side to side forces create a tight surface finish that prevents moisture penetration. The next compaction force is impact and it is dynamic and it creates more force on the mat than an equivalent static load. Impact force creates density in the layer faster than static forces. The risk of using impact force is that too much energy may damage the aggregate in the layer. The force of vibration is the most complex of the four compaction forces. Vibratory forces increase the energy developed by weight and impact. Drum vibration also reduces friction and aggregate interlock during compaction, which allows aggregate particles to move into final positions that produce greater friction and interlock than could be achieved without vibration. And therefore, both frequency and amplitude are important. The idle frequency and amplitude setting are a compromise based on desired mat smoothness. Low vibration frequencies combined with high roller speeds will create unsmooth surface. In general, higher frequencies and lower roller speeds are preferred because it provides a smoother mat. As a general rule of thumb, a combination of speed and frequency that results in 30 to 35 impacts per meter is good. And at 3000 vibrations per minute, it gives a speed of 4.5 to 5.5 km per hour. When lift is thin, means the thickness of the layer. When layer thickness is thin, less than 40 millimeter, we should operate in static mode only. Under vibratory mode, as the pavement increases in density, the drums may begin to bounce, which may cause the HMA to shove and become less dense. Also, some of the aggregates may be crushed. However, in some cases, vibratory mode may be allowed to obtain a smooth transition or joint density. When the lift thickness is 30 to 50 mm, use high frequency and low amplitude. And when thickness is more than 50 mm or you have a stiff HMA, use high frequency and high amplitude. So these are the factors which influence the compaction of a bitmus layer in field. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do write your suggestions in the comment box.